prophecy from 2001. Prior to the destruction, the spirit that strengthens all things feminine. Through Stephen Crowder. A spirit has arisen in your country, my son, a spirit that was put in place, according to my will, decades ago. It is growing in strength and influence, and no one shall be able to stop its progress, says the Lord. Those who attempt to do so shall proceed forth in vain, it will be as futile as attempting to stop the rain from falling in Noah's day. This is the great judgment upon your country, and no one will be able to stop it. I will cause it to run its course in your nation, and when things are in their proper place, it is then I will cause the foretold catastrophic events to take place that will crush this modern-day harlot known as the United States of America. The spirit of the strong woman riding atop the devil's beast has been going forth and conquering with great subtlety and deception for scores of years in your country, and the purpose in this is to bring forth my desired results as a judgment upon your nation, my great judgment that will lead to her fall, says the Lord. Therefore, make your ear attentive to my words that I shall speak to you here, and then go forth and warn those of my people who will listen so that they will understand that it is the hand of the Lord at work in this matter concerning your country. You must warn them not to intervene in this matter with their prayers, for in this they can only attempt to hinder my purposes, for these things shall come to pass, and they must come to pass, for it is the judgment that I have chosen for her, the United States of America and set into motion years ago. I have shown other watchmen of mine the horrendous judgments that will come upon your nation, the stars falling from heaven, and the mists and vapors that will fall upon her, leaving countless dead in their wake. What I am showing you here is what will occur just prior to and leading up to these horrific events, for many have cried out to me, Lord, when will these things come to pass, and what will be the sign of their coming? Have I not said that I will do nothing, unless first I reveal it to my servants the prophets? Amos 3-7 There are many of my watchmen scattered about, warning my people that danger looms upon the horizon, but sadly, the great majority of those who call themselves my people only listen to them in order to placate their itching ears. To put it more simply, their hearts cannot truly comprehend what the Lord is saying to his people. For so many have chosen beforehand that they will only hear what they want to hear and then discard the rest, lest it become bitter within them. My son, when I told other servants of mine, those who would actually do all that I told them, to eat of the book or to eat of the scroll, was it not sweet in their mouth, yet it made their stomachs bitter? And yet these blessed ones of mine partook of this bitter meal out of their obedience and out of their love and devotion to me. It is this type of compliance that is pleasing to your Lord, and yet the great majority of those who call themselves by my name have never learned to walk in this type of obedience. Instead, they have deceived themselves into thinking that if something becomes bitter to them it must not be of me, this is the lie that they've chosen to believe in order to keep them from suffering. And sadly enough, this is the great lie that so very many have been given over to, so many in fact, that if you saw it, your heart simply would not be able to endure it or even to comprehend it. This is how great the deception has become in these last days, for sadly the great majority has chosen to deceive themselves into believing only in part that which I have tried to show them, discarding the rest as though it is of no use to them. My pearls have truly been cast before them, and yet they have foolishly trampled them underfoot. I am not speaking of the world here my son but of those who call themselves my people. Let it be known that those who have chosen to follow this course will receive a much greater judgment in the coming days than those who have willingly bore their crosses and who have chosen to suffer rather than to only obey me in the parts that they have chosen. Those who have chosen suffering rather than the fleeting pleasures of this world are the ones who have produced their fruit in the great furnace of affliction, and this fruit can never be taken away from them. It has been stored where moth and rust can never touch it, and where the thief can never take it away. Soon, the wheat, those of mine who have produced true fruit of the Holy Spirit, shall be safely set aside into the barns of my choosing, the safe places that I have reserved for them, while the tares, those who resemble the wheat and grow in the same field, yet who did not bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, 
shall be bundled up together to be burned in a very hot oven. And it is in this oven that the last chances will be given to them to produce fruit meat for repentance, the same fruit as the thief upon the cross brought forth in his last hours upon the earth. Although his life was indeed over, yet he was spared an eternal punishment and was granted a place in the eternal kingdom and the paradise of God. This shall serve as an example for the many who will be thrown into the great furnace of affliction in the days to come. Selah. Do not be surprised or discouraged my son when this message is only received in part by some who hear it. There will be those who will attempt to lift you up with great flatteries, and those who will outright despise you for speaking as my mouthpiece, saying in their hearts, Who is he that he should speak the words of the Lord? There will be those who will truly be blessed by this message, while others will be blessed only in part, seeing that they've chosen to believe only the parts that they desire while forgetting the rest. Do not let your heart be heavy or troubled by the rejection that you will see, for they are not rejecting you, but they are actually rejecting me and casting aside my words, and I the Lord will deal with them accordingly. As for you my son, go forth into that which I have allotted for you, and be careful to guard your heart from the snare of pride, for in that which you have proven yourself faithful in, more shall be given. And think not that my hand is not upon you any more when there are periods of peace and silence, for the Lord knows of your endurance and he will place you in restful places as he sees fit. The spirit of the strong woman riding atop the devil's beast has been at work in your country for decades now. She is haughty and proud, yet reserved and cunning. The spirit of theater has been upon her, causing her to act out her part with great deception. Although she smiles widely in her heart while inflicting cruelty, she will not allow her facial features or her body language to disclose this. It takes great spiritual discernment in order to see this, for its veil is very deceptive and very convincing. This is why I sent you to the stable, and why I kept you there for many days. What was it that you saw while you were there, my son? I said, Lord. I saw a beautiful woman who lived solely for the purpose of controlling the great beasts that she rode upon. This woman possessed exceptional strength and poise, and she was very influential. She received great adulation and many prizes for her mastery of the horses she rode upon. As I watched her, I began to discern many things in my spirit, things that troubled me. And the Lord said to me, What were these things that you saw? I said, Lord, there were many things out of place in this woman's life, as she truly lived to master her control over the horses she owned. Her marriage was one that was based out of convenience rather than love, and I saw very little affection between her and her husband. Rather than seeing two lovers, I saw a man who was used for the talents he possessed. He was used to build things and to fix things in this woman's quest for more, more and yet still more. And although she was married to this man whose name means the rock, she refused to take his name, continuing to go by a name that she was not even given by her own father. This prideful thing caused me to shake my head and to ponder why it was this way. And sadly, Lord, I saw that the union of this couple brought forth a child whom she's orphaned due to her dedication toward mastering the control of these great beasts that she sits upon. I was appalled to see that in her quest to master these horses, it was really the beast itself that was controlling her. And the Lord said to me, You have seen correctly in this. What is the name of the child that this woman has brought forth? I said, The boy's name is Travis. And the Lord said to me, What you have seen here is very symbolic, and a foreshadow of what is happening in the spirit realm. The boy's name means travesty. The woman goes by the name of her own choosing, although she is married to a man named Rocky, the name that means the rock. This is what has become of many of my people in your country. Pay close attention to me as I explain this. Claiming to be married to and reserved for me, the great rock of their salvation, many of my people have chosen to go their own way, choosing to go by the names of their own choosing and bringing forth children in a great travesty children that eventually become orphaned, this being due to their parents being controlled by the beast. These children that they bring forth are an easy prey for the enemy, 
seeing that they have absolutely no influence from the one that bore them, and in many ways they're abandoned and must fend for themselves during their lifetime. And the Lord said to me, What is it that you have observed concerning the heart and the influence of this woman who sits upon the beast? I placed you for many months as a fly upon the wall so that you could observe her and learn. Tell me now, what is it that you have seen? I said, Lord, I saw a great disdain that was brought forth toward all men, although it was veiled with a smile and a type of feminine pose that I was able to see through. What I saw was actually more masculine than it was feminine, and it was concealed by a front that was very beguiling. I saw a great disdain for men that poured forth from this woman, and it affected all of the women around her and within her sphere of influence. And once in the spirit I actually saw this woman standing with other women of like spirit. She was boasting and saying, The actual purpose of men is to serve us and to kiss our backsides. Lord, I feel badly saying this, but that's exactly what was shown. And the Lord said, You have seen correctly in this. I said, Lord, this woman was rich, and she was married to a man who was also rich, and through her wealth she was able to control people with a cruelty that was also masked behind a beautiful smile. While buying herself many expensive things, she stated that she simply could not afford to pay her servants any more than the meager wages she offered them. And what shocked me the most is that I saw other women coming to her and paying her to teach them how to be just like her. And these women also had a great disdain for men, saying in their hearts, You may clean up after our animals, but you can never be our friend. And it was common to hear them say things such as, typical male reasoning, and typical male response, as their prideful boasting poured out of their lips. At this I wanted to become violent, but I was restrained from doing so. Lord, what does all of this mean? And the Lord said to me, My son, I have placed you within the confines of the stable in order to show you the heart of the spirit that is sweeping your nation. It is cruel and cunning using the wiles of a woman who has patiently waited for her chance to control things. The beast she is riding upon is none other than your adversary the devil, and although she attempts to control him, it is actually he that is controlling her. This is a spirit, and it is going to run its course in your country, using its influence to bring forth my desired results, and then her end will come before the whole world. I am raising up the spirit of the strong woman in your country and in her quest for power she will act very cruelly, although her feminine wiles will cause her to appear beautiful. She will have a great disdain for men, and will treat them as mere servants to fulfill her needs, although she will claim to be submissive. This spirit is going to affect every facet of your society, including politics, religion and especially the entertainment industry. I said, Lord, just how will this affect our country? and how will it manifest itself? And the Lord answered my request and said, In the entertainment industry, women and men are going to change positions. You will more and more see women becoming the heroines, with the men serving them and being made to look foolish. You will more and more see women leading the way as hunting and fishing guides and carpenters and supposed experts in the fields that men once dominated. You will see more women in professional sports and women dominating the music industry. Many of the songs that they will bring to great popularity will speak in demeaning ways about men, and this will influence many. And, as is presently the case, the most popular music will be about sex and love, as this theme will continue in its ever-seeking quest to deceive people that sexual lust is to be equated with true love. Some of the worst examples that you will see will come from the television as beautiful women will be used to seduce many, this being due to their physical attractiveness and their talents in being able to act. They will be like so many beautiful puppets on the stage, spitting out lines that have been created by those who are completely given over to doing evil, people called screenwriters and songwriters who abhor the Lord and desire to play out this hatred by flaunting their well-conceived words and scenarios in front of all people. Increasingly, the good versus evil theme will be artfully projected as woman versus man, with man being the evil character and this will seduce many into siding with this way of thinking and acting. When you hear them singing the words, I am woman, 
hear me roar, know that the time of the end is drawing very near for your country, and that her judgment will soon come quickly and without mercy. You will see women rising in power and influence within the world of religion, with an ever-increasing abundance of them pastoring churches and teaching my word from the pulpit. Is it not written in my word by the Apostle Paul that I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain silent? 1 Timothy 2:12. And was it the Apostle Paul speaking, or was it the Lord? Paul was merely a messenger, a chosen vessel as it were, to speak my words. There is nothing wrong with a woman sharing with the brethren that which the Lord has given her but that is a completely different thing than it is for her to stand up in front of all and teach. In your country you are going to see more and more women standing before all and teaching from my word, and the people will love to have it so, says the Lord. For it is easy to teach from the well of knowledge, and there shall be many brilliant ones that will stand up and boldly proclaim the word of God, all the while not knowing that they are only a small part of the overall plan that the Lord has in order to bring this spirit of the rebellious woman into its final place of power before the great hammer falls. These women will be greatly influential, speaking of the great things that your Lord has done, but this will not be the type of preaching that comes from being led by the Holy Spirit. At best it will be earthly speaking to the natural man to come and get saved by Jesus in order to prevent an eternity in hell. And this type of preaching will be very common in the days to come, and there will be those who will come forth in order to receive me into their lives. But, there will be those who will go on from there and who will make me not only their Savior, but more importantly their Lord and Master and they will see the need to forsake man's systems and they will gather only unto me and will not attach themselves to the systems of man any more. These will indeed be the blessed ones of my flock, says the Lord. Within the world of religion, you are going to see the powerful woman growing in strength and influence, and the feminine things that reside in the area of the soul shall become more and more manifest. There will be movements coming that will operate completely within the emotions with great deceptive fits of crying and wailing, and these will be called manifestations of the Holy Spirit. No more laughing and barking like dogs, but weeping and wailing and crying, all in the name of the Lord. It shall be said in that day, and rightly so, that the time of great sorrows is soon to be upon us, therefore the great bouts of weeping. This too shall be a great deception for it shall be wailing from the soul and not out of conviction brought forth from the Holy Spirit, and all the while the people will say, We are weeping due to the time of great sorrows, behold how the Lord will bottle our tears and pour them back down upon us as a great blessing. I say to you that you will see manifestations in that day that will absolutely stun you due to their completely carnal nature and yet the people will continue to say that it is the sweet anointing of the Holy Spirit upon them. This too will be the fruit that will come forth from the emotions of men and women, due to the strength and influence of the Spirit that shall strengthen all things feminine. It shall be not only women who will be affected by this Spirit, says the Lord, but men also who shall open up to it and become affected. The evidence of this will be in them bowing down to and serving these strong women in an undue manner. This manner shall go way past that of normal servitude as it shall be geared at lifting women up to a highly elevated place, and submitting to them with great zeal. Men who are affected by this spirit will also become much more emotional, even to the point of acting effeminate as part of their walk. There will be men who are infected by this spirit who will have great ministries that will become geared more and more toward the emotional side of things, and they too will become highly influential in the days to come. Sadly though, what they will equate with the blessings of the Lord in that day will be no more than great emotional outpourings that are a direct result of the leavening of this spirit. It is written in my word not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah 4-6, And that which you shall see in that day shall not be done by the power of my spirit but by the power of the Spirit that I shall allow to rise in power and that people shall be given over to in that day, says the Lord. In the political arena, you are going to see women rising into more and higher positions of authority, says the Lord. 
This spirit that is at work in your country will empower them to boldly enter into places that have in the past been dominated by men. Ultimately, you will see a woman attain to the highest office in the land, being swept into office by those who are under the influence of this spirit. As part of the political campaigning, you will see evidence of this powerful spirit at work if you're looking for it, it will be very obvious to you in that day. Whether this woman will attain to the highest executive office in the land due to running as number one or number two on the campaign ticket does not matter, she will attain to the highest position at my appointed time, whether it be due to winning by attrition or winning by election. And, at that time, you shall see the great many rejoicing in this so-called victory, not knowing all the while that it is the Lord who has set their table before them and they shall eat a very bitter harvest. Of this new leader. It has been said decades before that she shall be well-dressed and beautiful, but cruel in heart. Her heart shall be as far from the Lord as north is from south, and she shall lead the country into its final ruin. Again, when you hear the words I am woman, hear me roar, take great heed, for the time of the end in your country is soon to be upon you, and you will stand absolutely shocked at what you will see happening in the days to come, says the Lord. When I cursed the woman in the Garden of Eden, part of that curse was that her desire would be for the man's position of authority, for it is written, Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And so it is in your country my son, for women are now heading into the final phase of the great takeover that has been ordained years ago, and what the people shall call a great blessing shall in fact be a great curse, a terrible judgment that will mark the end of the United States of America a country that had, years before, sold itself out to do evil. It is written in my word that a house divided against itself cannot stand, and in this case the house is your country my son, the United States of America. I have and I will cause the men and women of this country to be divided against one another, and then her end will come. Do not pray against what your Lord has already ordained. But warn the people of this coming judgment and tell them to get their hearts right before the Lord, to hold on steadfastly to what is right, even though everything around them may be going completely off course and contrary to the Lord's will. I am the Lord, and I will protect my own in that day. Although they will walk through the valley of death, they will not fear, for I will be with them. There will be great mourning in that day, for the slain of the Lord will be many and this will include friends and family as well as those who have persecuted you. In that day, says the Lord, fear will be far from you, although you will lament those who have fallen by the sword and by the multitude of pestilence about you. And in that day, says the Lord, you will know without a doubt that it was by my hand that you stood, and that you are my people, and blessed will you be in that day. This is the word of the Lord. I received this word in 2001 sometime between January and July. The Lord was saying that the saying I am woman, hear me roar would be one of the earmarks that would become popular when this spirit really got going, succeeding in elevating a woman to great political power. The Spirit of God said that a woman would ascend to the highest office in the land, and said that she would attain that position either by election or attrition. My thinking in this is that there could possibly be a woman running on the ticket as the vice presidential candidate, only to become president at a later time. It is said that this woman, once she gets into office, will be the last president. Interestingly enough, I heard that song being sung as an advertisement for a network on TV called the Oxygen Network recently I was surprised to hear it. Your brother